I don't know. When we asked Ed about the the fact that Cliff Kingsbury is uh, has basically surrounded himself with people who are experienced, right? Yeah, to a well, to a certain degree. And I had their where did their I had their coaching staff pulled up. Go ahead. So let's talk about the fact that let's look at the Panthers, for instance, right? Matt Rule surrounded himself with a guy, at least on the defense, that was experienced, who's had a lot of history, uh, just being able to scheme defenses, right? And what is the best part of our entire team? Bar none. Yeah, right? it's, it's, it's the definitely defense. the defense. Yeah. Now, like to, be, to that extent, right, let's go ahead and take a step backwards and also look at what we're dealing with. We have a stacked defensive line. We have a incredible secondary now that we've added a couple of di uh, different additions. Um, we have Jeremy Chin. We have Shaq Thompson, who's actually turning it on. But I think you have to be able to put some of that on onto, uh, onto <clears throat> Phil Snow because Shaq Thompson wasn't playing to his potential until Phil Snow got here. Um, you know, Dante Jackson was okay, but like I feel like this year he has taken a major step forward. Now, the past few games, I feel like Dante Jackson has been kind of missing in action a little bit, but um, missing in action, Jackson. Um, and uh, that being said, like that, the defense is definitely our, our best part. Now, let's look at this. What is their offensive coordinator? It's uh well it's really um Cliff Kingsbury. But he was right. a he's, prior, right? Yeah, he's the head coach. No, well, he was a college head coach. So he comes in, he takes over the whole squad, and then they have um and, and he's gonna be their offensive guy. Like that's actually the recipe a lot of people think is a good one. Right. right. Is because say that's why people are actually like, Oh, Joe Brady should be quarterback, because if Joe Brady really is off awesome, he's gonna leave and become a head coach. Right. And that's the thing is so you bring in the head coach offensive guy who will stick around no matter what. And the guys who then he has to just worry about surrounding him with guys that are competent at their job, particularly right. on defense. And if you look at this, is that <coughs> uh defensive coordinator Vance Joseph, sixteen years of experience, we, former yeah, he is a former uh, head NFL coach. head coach, yeah. right? So I mean, it was look, one year. It was stay, one year, but he had it. And all coordinators. Stay okay. there, the coordinators for me. My point being is every one of his, like the people that are his people that are surrounding him are experienced majorly, like 15 years in coaching experience, right? Mm -hmm. Cliff Kingsbury is the youngest on that entire squad right there. And he at least had an opportunity to prove himself beyond just being an assistant of some sort, right? That's the problem that I have with the way that our, our, our team is set up right now. Joe Brady should have never been hired for a rebuild. Period. Like, no question about it. Like, Matt Rule, okay. We can go ahead and bring him in. He has experience. In, <clears throat> yes, it might have been in college, but he has experience rebuilding and coaching and everything at a high level at a head coaching position, right? Joe Brady did not. Joe Brady has had no experience outside of, like, even if you want to look at his NFL experience, it was so minimal. Like, and then his, like, he was a passing game coordinator. I know it may seem like we're trying to diminish what he's done, but I mean, I think it's fair to assume, like, I, I think it's important that we make the distinction. The weakest part of our entire offense is our, like our entire team is our offense. And I think that doesn't, it, it doesn't bode well that our offense, again, this is exactly what I was talking about. Ed alluded to it. You've got to be creative when you don't have the pieces that are that are that should fit together. When you know that you have a weakness in the offensive line, when you know that maybe your quarterback isn't the greatest, you've got to get creative. And Joe Brady has done nothing to show that he is capable of doing something beyond what Madden suggests they should do on first down, second down, or third down. Joe Brady is not the guy, and he has not proven yet. And I think that he needs to go back and actually have an opportunity to prove himself at a level that's not so intense right now. I think the problem is I don't think he's going to get better in this environment. He needs to go back and get may, you know, kind of take another step forward uh, other places. Joe Brady is not it. And he needs to be moved on. I tell you, if you do look at the experience, that's interesting when it comes to almost everybody is if you hear, wait until you see the Panthers. Now we don't list the years of experience, but just take a look at these guys faces. All right, and particularly some important coaches, right? 
is that obviously you got the young Cliff Kingsbury, the genius. You've got uh, defensive coordinator Vance Joseph, who is in his, you know, kind of in the prime of work time. Like this dude can mm -hmm. put in hours because he's like not too, too old. He's not too, you know, too young. He's been there, been around the block. Run game coordinator, 14 years. Uh, you drop down here, wide receivers coach, 16 years experience. Just look at his face, right? Well, actually, he's kind of a funny picture. Uh, offensive assistant, 26 years. James Saxon, look at this. I go to battle for James Saxon, 21 years old. This guy looks, he tough looking. Uh, you go down to defense here. You got Brenton, Bu Brenton, Brenton Buckner, former Carolina Panther. Uh, and Clemson, Clemson, former Clemson player. Bill Shout Davis, linebackers man. coach, 26 years of experience. Look, their, de their secondaries coach, their defensive back coach says 30 years. Cornerback uh, coach, 12 years. Now look at this. I want to look at the pictures because we don't list it. Panthers coaching staff. And for the Carolina Panthers, so we don't list their years of experience, but Matt Rule, look at this. Look at these faces on the offensive side of the ball, right? They don't look like, now we get here, Pat Meyer. And now, you know what? Just because he's old, he might be the, one of the worst coaches on this stuff. <laughs> look, these <laughs> guys coaches. don't look like they've really been good. around the block. On top of that, look at the defensive staff. They all look new. Actually, Don Johnson, whoever he is, he looks, he looks all right. Don Johnson from Miami. What was that, Miami Vice? Uh, look at these babies. Look at these children. I wonder if there's anything to that with the Carolina Panthers. Um, you know, it's maybe you tried to do too many things new at once. <clears throat> That's the problem. That's what I said. Like, like, when you're talking about a rebuild, you need to bring – like, a rebuild – it's not a matter of like, let's go experimenting, right? Like, okay, let's go ahead and go somewhere else. Like if we're going to bring in a new head coach, who's never coached at a head coaching position in the NFL, but has had opportunities uh, to coach at a head coaching in college and actually has a proven track record of rebuild. Like Matt rule has six years of head coaching experience before he in, in college, before he moved over Joe Brady has one successful season on a stacked team in LSU underneath the offensive coordinator as the passing game coordinator, right? Like was not even like the mastermind. They want, again, it's, it, it was easy for them to kind of give him as much credit as possible because it was an incredible year, but let's also keep in mind. He wasn't the guy calling the shot. Like he wasn't sitting there making the decisions. And now that he is, we're seeing what he's capable of doing. And it's not much. I don't think he's confident in his play calling. I don't think he's confident in his ability to design plays because what I've seen has been, again, my, you know, very vanilla. And that's a problem. Like I said, I, I'm not trying to sit here and just pile on. I know he's got a lot of people on off, like off of the bandwagon that Joe Brady was when he first got signed. But at this point in time, the experiment's over, get him out. Look at this. Um, uh, two things to talk about before we move on. Um, let's just, here's an experiment that I did. Right now, I had not prepared this, but I think it's working out. So what? who would be the second – who would you think is one of the more important coaches on this list on the offense? Obviously, it's Joe Brady. We know his history. Uh, tight ends coach, I don't know. For some reason, because everybody told me that Joe Brady was a super genius because he was the LSU passing offensive pass game coordinator – that that sounds important. So let's go and look at Frisman Jackson's bio here. In 2021, Frisman Jackson enters his second season with the Carolina Panthers and first as offensive passing game coordinator after he was promoted from wide receivers coach, fresh off a record-breaking campaign with the team's catcher and pass catchers last year. We know DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, Curtis Samuel had productive years. But look at this. Jackson came to Carolina in 2020 after spending the previous two seasons where? At Baylor, Baylor under Coach Matt Rule, where he served as the team's wide receiver coach. So here is what I'm saying is this. Look, his he's had two years. He spent two seasons as a wide receivers coach. Uh, with in Temple, so he's been with. Uh, so look, guess what? You know what? Matt Rule 
is bringing his dudes. Look, let's see if he has any NFL. He played for the Browns for three years, four years, and he has coached entirely. Oh, he was with the Tennessee Titans in 2017. One year, and he got fired. Yeah. So, you know, that's an interesting thing right there <clears throat> is – um, maybe there's something to that. Oh, the last point I got to make on this is that the most success Sean McVay has had was when Wade Phillips was his defensive coordinator. Now, I'm not saying that that's the best that the Rams defense has been in that entire time, but when they made that Super Bowl run, which actually I would say this is that wouldn't your Super Bowl appearance be your best season? Right. So sure. in their best season, in a early season, wasn't Sean McVay a first or second year coach? And then was, uh, uh, yeah, at that point, year, I think. And Wade Phillips, an old hat, right, who has seen everything that the NFL could do, was taking responsibility of that defense. Now, I'm not saying Phil Snow is essentially this young spring chicken. That's the problem. But wonder if throughout the coaching staff, there is too much inexperience at the pro level of how to engage with these players, how this season works, the rigors of it. They are having to learn everything. I mean, my problem is, is not even like to that extent, right? I mean, like at least that guy has uh, the past 14 years of experience uh, coaching in some manner, right? And, and doing what he's doing now. Like he's a, he was a wide receivers coach for all of those years, right? It's not like, and he's being he's been promoted to his current position a couple of times while he was at Baylor. He got that you know you know I guess that passing game coordinator promotion, and he just got it this year, right? So I mean I'm not even upset with that. My my problem is is again is Joe Brady. Like I mean outside of everything, like I'm talking about the guys, the guys that that Matt Rule has surrounded himself that are going to be the the basically the way I would look at it. You have the CEO, you have the CFO, you have like those guys, the people on the board that are below the CEO that he then trickles down this, his, his like, hey, listen, I need you to get these guys ready. I need you to do this. I need you to do that. Those guys, like those guys, the one person that I know, I mean, Chase Blackburn, we can debate on his. He, he you know, again, maybe just consistency, special teams, whatever. We, we have a lot of question marks on the special teams anyway, but that those guys, then you have Joe Brady, people with experience, and then Joe Brady. Like, outside of, the, like, let's pull up Joe Brady's history. How about we do that? Because that, I think, is going to be more hysterical. The oldest guy on our team, real quick, is Ed Foley. 30 years coaching experience. And look at this record. Or look at where he's coached at. Hmm. Surprise, surprise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All college. Yeah. Look, goes back. He probably coached Rule at at Penn State. Uh, then look, Temple, 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 Baylor. Baylor. That's some crazy mess, dude. Yeah, like uh, <clears throat> his is what his is, he hasn't. He's the only one that hasn't coached with Dang. Where is he? Is he up there? No, I'm I'm more interested in his his. His actual experience. Oh, it's all right. Well, he's only 31, so he can only right. have so much, right? Right. <clears throat> he was a linebacker's coach at William and Mary? For two years. Then he was a graduate assistant at Penn State. Uh offensive assistant. He in... wasn't even a coach at Penn State. He was a graduate assistant. Yeah. Um <laughs> Look at this. I mean, very limited experience at the top, at the very top of the offense. And that's even fine if you're young, but wouldn't you want to have guys around you that had uh, been there, done that before? But it really seems like you want to talk about maybe we didn't give this enough um, kind of criticism or scorn or hesitancy. At that moment, because it was like, it, a, it was like, oh, my God, we got the Sean McVay of college. Oh. Uh, no, nah, I was never. I, I was. I, I promise you. I. I. I'm the old I mean, curmudgeon. The I ain't days. ever wowed on Joe Brady. But here is that maybe we didn't give enough credence to the idea. Like we hadn't seen. We haven't seen college quarter. Uh, college coaches transition and have a ton of success in the NFL. 
There's not a long track record of it. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible, but not only is Matt Rule a college coach jumping from college to the NFL, his entire staff as college coaches jumping to the NFL. And how about this? None of those Temple or Baylor teams were ever world beater football teams. Right. They, they never won championships. And again, we're playing this nepotism thing where it's like everyone who's ever been at Temple, who's ever been at Baylor, who's ever been a part of Matt Rule's coaching staff, they just come and get a nice, cozy, cozy job. And yeah, no wonder we're playing like a college offense against a bunch of NFL defenses, man. I I, I think, you know, uh, I, I know that CK has a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, his arrows pointed at Joe Brady. And I get it, man. I'm not trying to rehash the whole Joe Brady thing. But when it comes to coaches, mine are pointed directly at Matt Rule. Because all of Matt Rule's co uh, decisions as a head coach have all been terrible for us. Like, what is one good thing that Matt Rule has done as a coach in his time here? Bill Snow. Like, can you, like, I mean, yeah, like, can you name one moment or one thing or one decision yeah, I that he made? Is, I thought it. I thought his first year, I, you know, I thought we were mis, um, not misled, but like the first year, it didn't feel like he was in over his head. I thought that, um, and particularly this in, in a Zoom world, right, is that they didn't have all the team I thought looked far more competent on both sides of the ball, not both sides of the ball, but yeah, I mean, it got better on defenses that with no parts and the offense looked far more competent last year uh, in a rookie season for this coach. And it was in an unprecedented, no training camp, no, you know, almost like he did better in that environment. That would I mean, be the only thing. Like, that's the only thing. Uh, I mean, Cody, like, I mean, that's the only thing is that you could, yeah. but there's not like a thing that uh, he gave you a significant advantage on. And this no. is what I always said with Ron Rivera is like, and actually Ron Rivera um, had good moments as a coach. So let's there not uh, forget yeah. that. But uh, Ron Rivera, what I always thought about him was, is that he won't lose your games, right? I mean, and he might, but he alone won't win you a game. And that is like, out, like we think Bill Belichick is going to take away something and like ruin you. Um, he like does, he gives huh? you, it would almost be like this is what is the over under for the wins, <clears throat> right? right. Um, if you took away Ron Rivera with COVID for a week and you mm -hmm. took away Bill Belichick for a week, I bet you the line in Vegas would move more for uh, Belichick. And what I mean is, is that it seems like we are thinking that these guys give them some sort. We think that McVay gives you some sort of advantage. You would think that uh, who is the guy in uh, San Francisco that we were, that people were so, were so high on. Um, Shanahan gives you this game advantage. I don't know if Rule at this point gives you any advantage. Actually, right. I don't know. I know he does. He hasn't shown anything that does. Uh, yeah. I, I think it's. I think it's more systemic than him. I think this just shows a um, a inexperience from his perspective to bring in inexperience. And I don't know if that means that he is a control freak. I don't know if that means he is um, loyal to a fault. I don't know if that means if he is threatened by people with experience around him, right? Is that the idea is that there's nobody on this team that is going to be the interim head coach. No, and that's a great point, man. He didn't bring a lot of experience to the football team. He brought a bunch of guys from college and expected that same success that he had to be able to translate over. And it hasn't. And I think that one of the things that's so upsetting is that we're all kind of learning on the fly who Matt Rule really is as a head coach. And he is in over his head. And again, I kind of think he'll get the benefit of the doubt no matter what. And we're gonna, he's going to be a head coach another year. But I just don't see how this gets better, man. We need more than one offseason. Uh, to fix this offensive line and to fix the quarterback position. And what are, do we think that Matt Rule and Joe Brady and Phil Snow, are they going to survive more than two more seasons 
Phil of what Snow, we're yes. Of, and Matt Rule, what, yes. I yeah, but I mean, will. but but Phil Snow, Phil. I mean, listen, if we fire Matt Rule, Phil Snow's out the door too. So it's Joe Brady. Yeah, yeah. I, I just don't I think. That, like, I don't, I don't think, think we'll get more than one year of of Matt Rule being I an think, average NFL head coach. I think if he's average, like if we have a step forward next year, he's still going to get a fourth year. Um, I think Joe Brady. Here's the thing, and this is why, like my my arrows, you're right. They're pointed heavily at Joe Brady, and it's not Joe Brady's fault, right? It's not. It is entirely in my mind one person's fault, and it's one that you and I both have grievances with, Cody, and it's David Tepper. Yeah. David Tepper is the one that brought Joe Brady. Joe Brady was not a Matt Rule hire. Hire, we all know that he does not fit what Matt Rule does. Like it's never like basically this was David Tepper sitting there thinking, you know, this you know offensive genius that destroyed you know the uh, the, the the league and the Clemson Tigers when they went to the uh, you know the college football championships, right? Like it, it, that's what we saw. He he had a historic year under uh you know with with Joe Burrow at at the helm. Joe Burrow had one of the best years as a as a quarterback in the league, right? Or in the in the, in the college. Uh, and and it, the problem was is like that was a hundred percent a Tepper move, one hundred and ten percent, right? And 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 right now that's who I have more of a grievance with. I think Matt Rule still has an opportunity to show that he's capable of doing some stuff. Right now, I think we're going to see this year in the draft what type of coach we have. If they actually start going after offensive pieces and in the draft and they make that a priority, then maybe you know we'll, we'll start to see that improvement that we're looking for. What I will say, yes, what is one good thing that Matt Rule has done? Um, it's kind of a, a pros and cons to it. The pro was we had one year of Teddy Bridgewater, and he cut, he cut the ties. Like, he didn't sit there and let that bleeding continue. The problem was he replaced him with Sam Darnold, right? Mm -hmm. That's, it was like, he's not afraid to realize, listen, we made the mistake. We need to figure something else out. But uh, like I talked about before, I just feel like we're just in this carousel where we're constantly buying high and, and, and selling low. And we're at a loss every time. And we're mm -hmm. continuing that with now with Sam Darnold and it, whatever we end up doing, if we go with a first round draft pick for a quarterback um, to try to, you know, fix this. And then we still haven't uh, assessed our, or addressed our offensive line. We could ruin a rookie quarterback as well. Yeah. So, See what he did there? See what he did there? Carousel. As I yeah. circled around these, uh, uh, I uh, circled the screen layouts like you, like the Carolina Panthers are rearranging the offensive line. Last night we were, I was on Charlotte Vibes channel and he had it. So the person, and maybe I could do this right here, um, say something now, Cody, because let's see if you something. switch to. No, oh, you have man. to do it. You have to do it. How do you yourself. do it? How is he making the so? Like, this is how this is how you do a solo layout, and 